tools. They are an important part of any Roblox game, adding on to a player's experience and giving them more things to do. However, tools can sometimes be hard to set up and make, especially for beginners, and can be frustrating to handle at times. So in this video, I'll be showing how you can make amazing tools to implement into your Roblox game. Before anything, make sure you go to the View tab on the top of your screen and enable the Explorer and Properties tabs. Now, you'll first need to create a model for your tool if you haven't already. For this video, I have this model of a sword. Now, make a new part. Go to the Explorer and name the new part Handle. Make sure it has a capital H, this is important for the function of the tool. Now, go to the Handle's properties and change the size to 1 by 1 by 1 or a cube shape. Once you're done, move the handle to where you want the player to hold the tool. Then, we'll need to weld the parts together to avoid any physical glitches. The easiest way to do this is to get the F3X Building Tools plugin which you can find in the description of the video. When you open the plugin, press F on your keyboard or click on this chain button on the menu. Then while having all of your parts highlighted, click on the button that says Weld to Last. You've now successfully welded the parts together. Now, go to Workspace and click on the plus sign beside it. Then, search up Tool. Click on the Tool instance to insert it. Then, highlight the handle and the rest of the parts you want to include in the tool. Place them inside the tool. Once you've done that, drag the tool and place it inside of the starter pack. Don't forget to change the transparency of the handle to 1. To make sure that our tool is positioned properly, we will be using another plugin called Tool Grip Editor, which you can also find in the description. Make sure you have your tool inside the starter pack and select it. Now, open the plugin. If you look around, you'll find a rig holding the tool that you've made. If you aren't happy with how your tool is positioned, you can move or rotate your tool however you want. You can rotate through these editing phases by pressing the letter Z on your keyboard. You can also change the increment that the tool moves or rotates by if you press the letter T. The lower the number is, the smoother the movement or rotation will be. When you're done, you can close out of the plugin to make the rig disappear. Now that we have our tool set, let's animate it. Let's first bring our tool back to the workspace. Then, go to the Avatar tab on the top and click on the Rig Builder plugin. This menu will pop up. You can choose either R6 or R15 for your rig type, but make sure to choose a block rig as the body shape, or your rig might look like this monstrosity. Now, drag your tool into the rig. Then, click on Avatar and open up the Animation Editor plugin. This menu should pop up on your screen. Now, click on your rig with your tool, and give your animation a name. Now, we are going to make two animations, an equip animation and a use animation. If you'd like to learn more about animating on Roblox Studio, you can watch this video linked in the description that gives you an in-depth tutorial on how to animate like a professional with the free animation editor. But to sum it up, you will first need to click on this plus sign and click on add all body to animate the rig. You can change how the rig looks by clicking on a body part and rotating it. If you make the rig move differently at a different time in the animation, it will create a keyframe in your menu below. Think of these keyframes as transitions. The edited body parts will transition from one position to another as the animation plays. You can edit the easing style and direction of a keyframe to change how smoothly it transitions to the next keyframe. As said before, an in-depth tutorial with a much better explanation will be linked down in the description. Once you're done, click on the three dots and hover over the Set Animation Priority tab. Then, click on Action. This makes your animation play above every other animation so that they don't overlap with each other. To upload the animation to Roblox, go back to the three dots and click on Publish to Roblox. Now, give your animation a name and press Submit. Your animation is now ready for use. Make sure to copy the animation's ID before exiting because we'll need it later. Now, let's get to scripting. Put the tool back in the starter pack. Then, click on the plus sign beside the tool. Search local script and click on the local script instance to insert it. Now, click on the plus sign beside the local script and search animation. Insert two animation instances into the local script since we have two different animations. Now, Name one of the animations equip and the other one use. 
Paste the corresponding IDs into each of the animation's animation ID values. Now in the script, we'll start by identifying the player, then the player's character, and finally, the player's humanoid. Then, we'll identify both the equip and use animations. If you'd like, you can add these four lines of code to ensure your animations play above any other animation and is looped. This is highly recommended, but optional. Now here's the fun part. First, we will identify the tool. Then we will make a function that will play the equip animation whenever the tool is equipped. We'll have a similar function for the use animation. But instead of stating the event called equipped, it will state the event called activated, which will activate whenever the player clicks with the tool equipped. If we test the game, we'll notice that the tool and its animations will work properly. However, if you spam click, the tool will do this. To fix this, we'll first add a debounce variable. Then, we'll add a condition that makes the tool wait one second after playing an animation before it can play it again. Here's the full script for the animations. When we play the game and test our tool, we'll see that we are no longer able to spam the animation. Now that we've successfully animated our tool, let's add a damage function to it whenever it is used by the player. We'll start by adding a script to the blade of our sword. Try to make sure that the blade isn't touching the player in any way. Now, let's get to scripting. We'll start by specifying our tool and our blade for the script. Then, we'll add a variable named Clip. This variable will match up with our use animation and its cooldowns. Then, we'll make a function that switches the click variable from true to false whenever the tool is activated or clicked. This function's weight value will match the weight value in the use animation. Now let's make a debounce variable like before so the player can't spam. Then, we'll make a new function for the damaging aspect of the tool. In this function, we'll first identify the player's humanoid. Then, we will check for three things. If the blade touches another player or rig, if the debounce is off, and if the use animation is activated. It will then turn the debounce on so that the function cannot be spammed, and then damage the humanoid's health before turning the debounce back off. As said before, make sure to set the weight value to whatever the weight value for the use animation is. This will be our full script. If you test the game, you'll be able to see that our sword tool can equally deal damage to any player or rig, which means you have successfully designed, animated, and scripted a fully working tool. Congratulations.